Welcome to the final presentation on the Joint Chiefs Landscape Restoration Partnership Panel. I'm Rosemary Smallcomb, Mariposa County Supervisor. Paraphrasing Winston Churchill, the subtitle of my presentation is Never Waste a Good Disaster. I was sworn into office in early January 2015 and ran smack into the tree mortality disaster. In 2015, Mariposa County was the hardest hit county with the greatest number of dead trees. It was a disaster we couldn't ignore and didn't want to waste. At that time, we didn't have the benefit of the organizing principles, strategies, and other information Leanne and Casey provided. Nor did we have access to the great research Susan has conducted. We made it up as we went. From the beginning, we knew the county couldn't deal with a disaster that big alone. That's where people like you and the agencies you work for came in. We were so fortunate that people like you understood that we were facing a significant disaster and that you were willing to help us. Let me begin by describing Mariposa County's neighborhood. Mariposa is a small rural community just under 1,500 square miles. About half of that is owned by federal agencies, Forest Service, Park Service, and Bureau of Land Management. Our neighbors are Tuolumne County to the north, Madera to the south, and Merced to the west. <clears throat> With the help of people like you in April of 2015, we hosted a community meeting to pull together whatever was known at the time and communicate that knowledge to concerned landowners. Some of you may have attended that meeting and some of your agencies were certainly there. Our fairgrounds facility, which houses a few hundred people, was quite full. We knew we had a disaster, but didn't even have good data on the magnitude of the problem. So we put together guesstimates. Good data came later with results from the Forest Service's aerial detection surveys. As you can see, the ADS results for 2015 showed 29 million trees had died. In the next couple of months, we formed the Mariposa County Tree Mortality Disaster Mitigation Task Force. We brought together local partners from government agencies, landowners, and timber operators. In the early days, we also coordinated with surrounding counties that were similarly affected, Madera, Fresno, and Tuolumne, primarily their county supervisors and offices of emergency services. I wasn't sure folks in Sacramento would necessarily know where Mariposa is located. We're sometimes confused with Maricopa County in Arizona. So, the Mariposa County Board of Supervisors approved a disaster declaration on September 15, 2015, on the same day as Tuolumne, Madera, and Fresno counties. Not willing to let this disaster go to waste, we had also been talking with regional and state level CAL FIRE and CAL OES personnel. Governor Brown's proclamation of a state of emergency on tree mortality was issued on September 29, 2015. The governor convened the Tree Mortality Task Force in November 2015. The governor's task force also looked for information on the magnitude of the disaster, and we were all looking for funding and other resources to begin felling and, where possible, removal of dead trees. Primarily, we looked to CAL FIRE, Joint Chiefs, EQIP, Forest Service Resources, and the Sierra Nevada Conservancy, braiding funding streams together wherever possible. I'll discuss local assistance for tree mortality, or LATM funding, briefly, and then focus on the benefits of Joint Chiefs projects that came very close to home literally with the Ferguson fire. When it became clear that counties didn't have anywhere close to the money needed for tree felling, then Cal Fire Chief Ken Pemlot worked with his team, with Cal OES Director Mark Gillarducci, the Governor's Office, 
and the legislature to include an item in the governor's budget for fiscal year 2017-18, $6 million for tree mortality. That was distributed among the 10 high hazard counties, Amador, Calaveras, El Dorado, Fresno, Kern, Madera, Mariposa, Placer, Tuolumne, and Tulare. That money, coupled with the match funding available under the California Disaster Assistance Act, translated into well more than $24 million worth of work, especially when combined with in-kind contributions from some of your agencies and other organizations. Counties used LATM funding to fell and remove dead trees around county infrastructure, primarily along county-maintained roads. Leveraging off of PG&E vegetation management projects wherever possible. At the end of the LATM funds, Mariposa had felled and removed dead trees from our 564 miles of county roads, except in cases where private landowners refused to provide right of entry. So now, with roads under control, back to the Joint Chiefs funding and the neighborhood. Just about dead center on this map, you can see the communities of Mariposa Pines and Jerseydale. Like many other rural areas, Mariposa Pines and Jerseydale have one road in and one road out, which is why tree removal along those roads was essential. South of Jerseydale is Lush Meadows and southeast of that is Ponderosa Basin altogether about 1,400 people. Looking at the Joint Chiefs Project's funding in the greater Jerseydale area, you can see the substantial amount of work that was completed, work that was funded primarily by Joint Chiefs and EQIP, along with other Forest Service resources and other partners. They completed over 2,500 acres of fuel reduction and forest health enhancement projects prior to the Ferguson fire. This program leveraged efforts of many partners utilizing various funding sources to provide larger landscape level treatments and greater benefits to both private and public lands. You can also see the footprint of the Ferguson fire surrounding Jerseydale and Mariposa Pines on the north and east sides. The Ferguson fire burned from July 13 through August 19, 2018. It burned through densely stocked forested areas. By the time it ended, two firefighters had died and just under 100,000 acres had burned. We lost 10 structures. The Ferguson fire operations map shows the full extent of the fire and the relationship to five of our communities. I mentioned that the Joint Chiefs' work was very close to home, not only to the homes of my neighbors in Mariposa Pines and Jerseydale, but to my husband's and my property. My husband and I were evacuated and staying with some friends when one morning we recognized that this picture, which went national, was taken on our property and posted on social media. Many of the 1,400 people in Mariposa Pines, Jerseydale, Lush Meadows, and Ponderosa Basin also saw this image and worried about their homes. And here's a video taken in the same time frame showing helicopters dipping from our pond. Here's our property identified with the arrow and labeled best dip. As a county supervisor and a property owner, I am personally incredibly grateful to the co for the cooperation the county received over the years leading up to the Ferguson fire. I know my neighbors in Jerseydale, Mariposa Pines, Lush Meadows, Ponderosa Basin, and Yosemite West are too. As a result of the combined forest management projects, 
Firefighters slowed the fire spread and stopped fire progression in many areas where Joint Chiefs work had been completed. They enhanced fuel breaks and utilized some of the previously treated areas to safely light controlled backfires and stop further advancement of the fire to aid in containment of the fire. In the few locations where the fire burned into completed Joint Chiefs project sites, it dropped down and behaved like a prescribed fire, doing very little damage to resources, reducing fuel loading, and enhancing overall forest conditions. That work stopped the fire from moving south and east into the communities of Lush Meadows and Ponderosa Basin. There is no doubt the forest management projects funded by the Joint Chiefs and other programs saved homes and lives in our community. The properties where projects had occurred served as, a sta as staging areas for firefighting initiatives and work along key roads permit permitted rapid deployment of equipment and personnel as well as orderly evacuation of residents. Thank you, Joint Chiefs, firefighters, and partners. After the Ferguson fire was contained and tree mortality rates began to decline, we built on the partnerships we developed with people like you and your agencies. Together, we established the Mariposa County Fire Advisory Committee, McFAC. McFAC's mission is focused on identification, funding, and implementation of projects related to pre-fire coordination, fire prevention education, fire risk reduction, and resource resiliency. We continue to rely on people like you, your knowledge, experience, and skills. There's a lot of money coming available now. California agencies have already committed 536 million in early action funding. The state's fiscal year 2021-22 budget includes 258 million for wildfire prevention and forest resilience. It also includes up to 500 million more held by the Department of Finance in case it's needed and up to 200 million in greenhouse gas reduction funds. On the federal side, legislation is still pending, but we understand they're looking at an additional 28.6 billion in disaster assistance and 1.36 in supplemental funding for the Forest Service to address consequences of wildfires. In addition, they're talking about 3.4 billion for the Department of the Interior and Forest Service to conduct various forest management activities. The Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities, or BRIC program alone, is, is slated for $1 billion this year. It's a lot of money, but we all know we need to spend it wisely. We need to make the most of the opportunities this funding offers. We need your help now more than ever. We need more projects like those in the greater Jerseydale area throughout our forested lands. It's not just about fuels reduction, it's reforestation and active management after a wildfire or other disaster. It's improving resource conditions and restoring forest health. We know that better managed forests are critical to address global warming. So, I ask you to contact someone like me in your area. Tell them you want to be a part of this critical conversation. And if there isn't such a conversation, tell them to start one. Tell them about Joint Chiefs funding, the work Leanne and Casey and Susan have done to pave the way. And tell them you'll be at the table to provide expertise, knowledge, and experience. Thank you for listening.